All right. I've got some other questions. Okay. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah. That biogas is, of course, supposed to replace fossil fuels. Okay, that, that's a good thing, right? Well, I mean, it'd be a good thing if it actually made a difference. Why is Norway excited about biogas in the first place if it clearly mm -hmm. isn't that efficient? Um, okay, so I think we can only really speculate because we yeah. don't actually know, but the two things that we've kind of come up with and that we think are quite legitimate, legitimate is that um, there's the first problem of biogas actually being a value-added good. You can market it, you can sell it, mm. you can make money off of it, and there's really no economic incentive for preventing food waste. Oh. Um, you have less throughput in an economy, and intrinsically that's not good, oh. right? Um, but the other reason that you kind of, we might have the situation that we have here today in Norway is that whenever you do studies that don't kind of consider upstream th processes and you just focus here on waste management and biogas production, yeah. your results will actually tell you that it's good to produce biogas because you're not considering all of the upstream energy consumption or yeah. the upstream phosphorus consumption. You're just looking at downstream processes. Um, so if you draw your system yeah. boundaries just around this, then you'll get different results. Oh, so that's... So your study is good because you look at the whole value chain. We That's try, we try. We try. We try. That's what we attempted to do. We attempted right. to consider everything. Okay. Well, that's essentially what a substance flow analysis is, is we track, you know, phosphorus and energy throughout mm. the entire Norwegian agriculture system. What does the substance flow analysis look like on the computer? What it looks like yeah. in reality is a whole lot of numbers. Uh, Something like <laughs> really a lot of numbers. That's a lot of numbers. Uh, and there's, of course, a lot of modeling behind this, yeah. and that's all stored somewhere else. All right. But this is kind of the result. Um, and, and if we want to like actually avoid food waste, yeah. prevent food waste, you can literally just click on this cell and set it equal to zero. <laughs> that's how that's how you run the food prevention scenario. Yeah, more or less. Just more or less. More or less. All right. Yeah. And uh, can Just... we visually see the changes that happen? Yeah. So I had a master's student work on this. Shout out to Richard. Shout out to Richard. <laughs> good work. Uh, yeah, good work. Well done, you. So this here, so if you click on this button here, this is the energy part of the model. Yeah. And this is kind of those arrows that I referred to in the other yeah. video. Um, and they'll have numbers. It's in petajoules. This is the actual, like, today's Norwegian situation, baseline yes. scenario. Exactly. Yeah. 2009 through 2011, okay. an average. But you can kind of say that it's really yeah. today's situation, yeah. Okay. Okay, there's the baseline. All right. And now we're recycling. All right. Well, it didn't see much difference. Yeah, there, there really isn't that much of a difference. Oh, okay. That's kind of maybe a All result right. in itself. And then prevention. Let's see what happens here. Now I'm clicking prevention. Are you? Are, is this baseline now? Oh. No, that went from recycling to prevention. All right. See the chain go back to recycling. Whoa. And Whoa. they don't it's, compare at all. They don't compare at all. Yeah, prevention is far better. Here, you don't need to address the problem of how to actually no. do the food uh, waste prevention, but how would you actually? Yeah, that's a, that's a question I don't really have an answer for, to be honest, oh. because the model that I've developed here really shows kind of where the food waste occurs, right? Yeah. So we can see where in the system it happens, at food processing or human consumption mm. or, you know, where animal husbandry, where it actually happens. Um, but often the source of the food waste and the cause for the food waste are very far separated from one another. Okay. Can you give me examples of... Uh food waste cause and source. Oh, that's kind of difficult. But yeah, okay, so like say you go to Sesam and you buy a burger and you see that buying a larger burger yeah. is only marginally cheaper, or sorry, is marginally more expensive. Yeah. So you think, well, okay, obviously bang for buck, I can go and get yeah. a bigger burger for only a fraction of the price mm. as buying a whole another burger. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, and then you buy the bigger burger, you can't really eat it, mm. and you throw it away. Okay. Economic yeah. incentives for over-consuming. Yeah. yeah. All right. Did that make sense? That makes sense. So that, that will be the... Cause. Cause. And the and source would be you literally throwing it away. Just throwing it away. Yeah. Okay. So you need to address both. 
You need to address both. But more concretely, you can say stuff like best by dates, oh, best yeah. before dates. There's not any information out there that's easily accessible that explains to you what a best by date, best before date, eat before, whatever. All mm. the different labeling schemes, they don't really tell you what that means. And so often people mistake them for one another and throw food away before it's actually bad. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. That's a fair point. Mm-hmm. Helen. Okay. Your, your, your paper, it's not called... Mapping the Norwegian agriculture system throughout the entire value chain and thereby been able to run scenarios for whether food waste prevention or food waste recycling is better. It's called Assessment of Food Waste Prevention and Recycling Strategies Using a Multilayer System Approach. So this multilayer system approach is apparently an important part of the paper. Why? Okay, good. Yeah, good question. <laughs> um, so... I guess you can consider this approach kind of novel because oh. it takes a traditional substance flow analysis and creates layers. And the different layers um, make a lot of sense because if you think about food waste and food production, um, it's all biomass or organic matter. And mm. this organic matter, it's food yeah. and that's feed and waste and yeah. manure and okay, all of yeah. those things. And then we took out the water. So we yeah. look at that modeled the whole kind of system that looks something like that, yeah. took out the water, then we had dry matter, only dry matter. And inside this dry matter, you have an energy content, like a calorie, caloric yeah. value, and then, of course, the process energy. And then it also has a phosph- phosphorus concentration. So if you kind of imagine that biomass is at the top, it's like the mother layer. Okay. And then we model phosphorus as a concentration of the mother layer. So we have one child layer then. Mm. And then energy as a child of the mother layer as well. Yeah. Um, and then added in process energy on top of that. Yeah, that, that's the chainsaw energy. That's the chainsaw, exactly. That, that process energy is not part of biomass. No, it's not. No, no, it's separate, but it's important to include. So when you do a multi-layer model, um, it's really interesting because you can try to optimize a bunch of environmental problems at the same time. Like you can you can look into different indicators and tweak it to see what's the optimum use of everything instead of just one thing. Okay. Yeah. It's good. It's, good. it's well done. I, I give you a thumbs up for <laughs> Thanks for that. Good job. Uh, and people haven't done multilayer substance flow analysis before or not in not this, in this kind context of, not in this context no i mean people have done it before for sure in metals for example but in a different way yeah. of looking at it yeah All right you've written a paper haven't you yes i have what are you hoping to achieve with that well, obviously the ideal situation would be all the politicians in norway read my paper <laughs> and decide to build preventative policies based off of it okay. but um realistically i don't think that there's much like in terms of that's why you do stuff like this, right? Like mm-hmm. you try to communicate your research further in the hopes that it will gain yeah. readership and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We will we will link to the paper. Thanks. Yeah. Is it going to be up or down? Oh, it's going to be down. Maybe I should do both. So if you have questions for Helen, <laughs> you can write them in the comments, and you have to you have to tell me where they are. That there you go. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube sellouts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. This okay. is a cow. It looks like a bear. Oh, it's like a perfect bear. <laughs> I want to show you that I'm not the only one that's shitty at drawing. All right. Uh... This is from a very important professor. <laughs> this uh, sheepasaur. <laughs> sheepasaur. <laughs> Look at that. That's supposed to be a sheep. It's supposed to be a sheep. You would never guess, would you? All right.